100th Fighter Squadron was part of the 332nd Fighter Group, known as the Tuskegee Airmen, and they were based out of Ramatelli, Italy. Uh, their normal mission was to accompany B-17 and B-24 heavy bombers in the strategic air campaign in the bombardment of Europe. But they also received other missions as required. On the day that Captain Lawrence Dixon crashed, he and his wingman had been assigned to escort a P-38 photo reconnaissance plane that flew over Prague, Czechoslovakia. They were returning from Prague when Captain Dixon developed engine trouble. It's this corner right here that it is a kind of tiny bit. There we go. Am I in the picture? Uh, the project that we're doing here is the result of a collaboration between the University of New Orleans, the University of Innsbruck, uh, the National World War II Museum in New Orleans, and the DPAA. We're currently investigating the site that we believe to be the location of Captain Lawrence Dixon. The crash site was lost, his remains were never recovered after the war, but as the result of some research by the DPAA, this really appears to be that location. So we're now doing excavations in the hope that we can recover something that we can definitively link to Captain Dixon and thus kind of close the, the case on what happened to him at the end of the war. We're currently excavating the crash site itself. After surveying the area, we think that's the most likely location that any human remains would be located. So we're taking a cross section, a, a bisection of the crash site to look at uh, essentially what happened to it over time. And we're hoping to, to recover uh, something, um, something from within that that we can definitively, definitively link to this one particular crash. Through my work uh, the last 17 years at the National World War II Museum as a curator, I've had the opportunity to assemble and study a number of World War II aircraft, including a P-51D model, this has made me familiar with the mechanical components and the internal parts of the plane and so that as we find disassociated material and fragmentary parts of the plane I'm often able to recognize what they are and note their original location. Ooh, more metal. This is the first excavation ever done. Um, it's truly an honor to um, have this excavation be my first one. Um, since we're looking for this pilot and looking for um, his P-51, it's amazing just working tangibly with the history from my own country. Um, it really puts things in perspective for me. It's also been an honor working with the in Innsbruck students as well. We have a lot to learn uh, from them. They have an amazing institute in Innsbruck, so we definitely learned a lot of skills from them. and. Then from being in Austria, it just shows how far we've progressed in history um, and that nationalities can be put aside at this point in time to uh, look for a U.S. pilot. This is the first time that I uh, work together with students from New Orleans. We are searching for this fallen war hero Fallen on uh, the day before Christmas Eve, 1944, and it's a kind of a tragic story since he died in the uh, in his best years, and it's quite a noble quest from the American ministry to search for their fallen heroes. Uh, a um, thing which is not so common here in Europe. So I'm deeply impressed about the concern and the efforts to bring their fallen heroes home. And I'm glad to be a part of this team. <laughs>